hello again to the lovely detective. Couldn't get enough of me, huh? Oh, don't deny it, sweetie. Look at me. Fit, rich, dangerous. I'm like catnip to someone like you. Really? So if I pulled out my shirt just a little, you wouldn't? Uh, there is my favorite color, blush red. You know, you say the word and we can get out of here. And I promise I can make you do a lot more than blush. Fine, you're right. I did come to give a statement, but I'm not going to pause my passes just because you're recording me. Hey, cutie, one more thing before you start the tape. I've got the best lawyers and, even better, butchers. If you use any of this against me, I promise none of the charges will stick. And plenty of sharp things will stick in you. Do I make myself clear? Smart and beautiful. You're the whole package, sweetheart. Alright. Is this thing on? Right. I am Sophia. I run a group of organized corporations that have been alleged to be a criminal ring. Some people have affectionately labeled me as a mob boss. My company does work across the east side of the river. My main rival, Oscar, operates in the west. Now, for our company's sake, we've agreed to stay in our own camps. We keep to our, our side of the river. One of my closest friends was strolling home one day and they stumbled upon a crime in progress. They understood that they had witnessed a drug deal and recognized the dealer. A kid that works for Oscar. Now, this kid is barely 18. So, my friend didn't want to ruin his life by turning him in. So, he did the smart thing and came to me. You know, detective, you could come to me anytime. Right. Strictly professional. <clears throat> My buddy comes to me and tells me what he saw. I've got a couple of contacts with private investigators, so I ring up one of them to dig up some dirt. Figure out who sold this kid any sort of weight. Why I know a private investigator is irrelevant, detective, and I don't have to answer that question. I'm not under arrest. I'm simply giving a tip to my local police station. As I was saying, I send the investigator to look into it. He finds that the kid got the wage from Oscar. Turns out, in addition to the completely legal business we both compete in, Oscar has been running a side hustle. He's been sending runners to deliver a new cocaine mix to my side of the river. Supposedly it's really good stuff. Oscar contracted an MIT chick, she's got a master in chemistry, and a couple of minors in biology. She's cracked some formula that's twice as addictive, with nasty withdrawal symptoms. 
Now, Oscar is flooding low-income communities with the stuff. I happen to open a large number of jobs to those who are underprivileged. And I hate to see them get taken advantage of like this. But I love the privilege to take advantage of you, detective. <laughs> You're no fun. Anyway, I know the police department is absolutely overwhelmed these days. Organized crime is through the roof. So, I got the investigator, bless his soul, to do a little more digging. It turns out, Oscar is sending out a shipment of around a thousand kilos of that stuff soon. Now, that is the question, isn't it? Where and when? Do you have a wife at home, detective? Husband, maybe? Oh, I think it's very relevant. I'm about to give you the tip that will stop thousands of dollars of illegal drug trade. And you're throwing a fit because I'm asking if you're taken. It's immature and unprofessional. I ought to have your badge, officer. Glad you see it my way. Now, are you or are you not on the menu? Single? Not by choice, I imagine. I bet you had a smoking little side piece once, didn't you? But they couldn't handle how much the work consumed you. How many nights they spent in an empty bed? Was that a detective? You know, I wouldn't mind someone who works long hours. Someone who doesn't come home every night. We just have to do something special when they're around. Make the time count. When and where? Well, let's think. Tell me, detective. Are your free Friday nights? Why? Because <laughs> I want to ask you out. Of course I'm thinking summer candlelight, full moon, cheesy bread. You're not allergic to shellfish, are you? Wow, you are a clever one. Yes, I was thinking of the bistro down by the docks. But I must insist that we go on a full moon. When the light dances across the water, it looks absolutely magical. Now, I'm no werewolf, so maybe I'm wrong. But I think the moon is full next Friday. Maybe we could head on out there then. Ah, detective, don't leave just yet. You're missing something. Well, I can't tell you, silly. Clearly you aren't interested in our date, so I'll have to withhold the last bit of my info. At least until we order some crab puffs. So, how about I pick you up on Friday at about 9-ish? You can even bring your friends. Although, I don't know if the commissioner will want to send a SWAT team to sit in a bistro. A nothing but my good word. So it's decided then. 
nine on Friday. I'll be outside your dingy little apartment and something expensive. Probably red too. I'm sure it will stand out amongst the slum cars. I expect you to be dressed to the nines, alone and ready for action. Sound good to you? What kind of action? Oh, aren't you a curious one? Well, buy me a couple of drinks and I'm sure we can do any kind of action you want. Well then, let me say it another way. If you get me drunk enough, then we might do it in any back alley we can find. So, you should probably bring your gun, just in case. You never know when you might need some self-defense. No. I won't be elaborating on that any further. You're a detective. Read between the lines. All right. This interview is over. Unless you want to leave together, then I'll be going right now. <laughs> That's what I thought. Can't wait to see you dolled up for me, detective. Oh, and try to get some sleep. I can't have you on my arm with shadows under your eyes. People will talk. Ta-ta!